Hi, we're Tanner, Rissa, Willa, and Noah. We're a little American family living our dream of life abroad and documenting our experiences along the way. At the end of 2023, we moved from Germany to Japan and currently live about an hour south of Tokyo. Our farewell to Deutschland was difficult, but we made the most of our time there and had some of our favorite memories that opened our hearts and minds. Since arriving in Japan, we've had quite the adventure. We've not only explored the largest city in the world, Tokyo, but we've fallen in love with nature here in Japan. We've also gone on two different international trips to Taiwan and South Korea. Definitely check out those fun adventures. We've made new friends, tasted some incredibly delicious food, and have loved learning about the many Asian cultures. Our journey abroad hasn't always come easy though. We've experienced many obstacles and heartbreak, and we've been stretched in ways that we wouldn't have ever guessed. So with that, we want to say thanks for being here, thanks for being a listening ear and an online friend. Now let's get into it. What's going on everyone? It's another hot day here in Japan, and we're sitting down outside at my work. Rissa came up with Willa, and we're no just way. kidding. Sorry, <laughs> oops. <laughs> we do that every now and then. Came up here with Noah, and she's currently taking a nap, so we're taking full advantage. Doing a quick update and another get to know you from us. It's been a while since we've done this. Like we've, I think the last time we did like six months, we've lived here in Japan, and we talked to you guys about some of the things we're loving about Japan and some of the differences between our lives in Europe and here in Asia. And that was really fun, but I feel like we didn't get to like the meat of how we're doing. You know, like I feel like we talk a lot about our life here and we share our adventures with you guys, but I feel like I'm wanting to like really connect with you guys and like let you in a little bit more. Yeah, we've been talking a lot lately over the last few weeks just about so many life changes that we're experiencing and not that we're going to go into a huge monologue of every detail, but I think it is exciting for us and maybe important to us and part of our uh, journey with life changing as always with as young parents and also just ourselves uh, internal changes to like give some of those updates. So today we're going to be trying to do this video here uh, to hopefully give you some more insight of what has really been going on in our minds and in our lives and a few of those things we're going to touch on is like kind of like what daily life looks like for us here in Japan. Uh, so why don't you kind of say a little bit about that? Yeah, so I feel like this is kind of like a typical morning that we've had. It's Friday actually here and so Willa woke up. We got her ready for her yochen, her Japanese kindergarten. After that I'm normally trying to get some movement in. I've realized life with two kids is much more it's just crazier than life with one kid and it's funny like how you grow and your capabilities transform um, you know when you have more kids. Sorry there's a huge ant that just called up me. Go ahead. <laughs> and so I just remember with Willa I was like gosh doing a workout with with one kid is so difficult, but now when I only have one kid, I'm like, still difficult, but like way easier than I ever felt it was with Willa. So that's what I try and do is like go on a walk. It's not like anything crazy because it is so difficult to like do a HIIT workout or go for a jog, especially in this heat. But I do try and get some movement and then jump into it with work and YouTube while parenting at the same time and taking care of Noah and trying to have fun memories with her. Sometimes I come up to work to Tanner's work and we'll go for like a walk. Normally it's just a walk. <laughs> yeah, it's normally about all the extent it is. I usually try to keep walks in part of my like daily routine as well because that's just, uh, it's it's a lot harder to try and fit in workout time during my work day um, compared to Europe. Like the command that I worked for, it was really nice. I had three hours every week. I could get my workout in and then when I came home, I didn't have to worry about it. But we try our best and it's not all the time. Heart ants here. We sat probably right on an ant hill, but um, <laughs> overall, yeah, that's it's like a highlight when I think she's able to come, and it's not always, but like today, kind of fun. We got a few minutes walk while Noah fell asleep, and it's kind of nice. Nice view of the ocean over here. It's really feels good in the shade. <laughs> it feels really good in the shade. Yeah, like I said, the summer heat. It's another point that we'll talk about at some point, mm -hmm. but it is. Yeah, it definitely adds an element of difficulty with our daily activities, especially like once Willa gets home. It's not like you're itching to get outside immediately because it's super hot. Right? Yeah, which has kind of been a balance because we love going outside. We love, you know, prioritizing that outdoor time with our kids. And so we're finding that we're having to do that more in the evenings. So normally that's what happens. Willa gets home and we, you know, have a snack and just enjoy being with Willa and normally are doing activities and just being inside or playing and then Tanner gets home from work 
and I feel like from there it's like so quick until bedtime it feels like it feels like an hour because I get home and then it's we usually typically eat dinner a lot earlier than mm -hmm. we both did growing up like I would say by five thirty, six o'clock we are done cleaned up and mm -hmm. like ready to get the kids for bed so we like to go on a walk or and to then go on bedtime. a walk and then bedtime mm -hmm. but yeah we typically don't eat dinner past six o'clock like I would we, say it's a rare occasion if we're home yeah we try and do that and we both enjoy that mm -hmm. then yeah it's bedtime and we get you know we savor those couple hours when our kids are asleep and we can talk work on things work lately on things. it's been working on things which is yeah. unfortunate we're trying to find a better balance I feel like that's kind of what where our life has been for a couple months <laughs> maybe longer I've just like really trying to prioritize family memories family activities and working and like reaching our goals and resting like the balance I'm sure will be like a lifelong balance and I'm sure so many of you guys here watching can relate but that's definitely something we've been thinking about and trying to do and one of those things that we've been doing is like reading uh, we have a book club and we've been reading the book fed up I don't even know the author uh, Gima Gemma is that how you pronounce it? It's G -E Gemma? Maybe it's Gemma. That's probably how you pronounce her name. But anyway, it's a book about this lady who has written an article several years before publishing the book, I think. Don't quote me on that. But the whole premise of the book is about emotional labor and about women being fed up of the heavy load that emotional labor has been directly and indirectly placed upon them as society has generally, like, expected women to be the homemakers, to be the peacemakers, to be the everything but the yard work, <laughs> the day job Kind of like stuff. the stereotypical like gender roles that I feel like has just been a normal. Mm -hmm. It's changing. I feel like there's a shift, but this is definitely one of the books that you read and you get a little fed up per the title. <laughs> so we've been having a lot of like conversations on how to better like split the emotional labor, the invisible work that I naturally have kind of taken upon myself I mean don't don't downplay it it definitely has been the majority of it as it has yeah. been you know and I think that's what the difficult thing has been of maybe even revisiting a lot of those invisible labors or emotional labors is like I generally consider myself and I think you agree that like I I am very hands-on with so many aspects of our lives but mm -hmm. with that being said there are so many more things on top of it that just require the extra thought or extra planning or extra consideration that I've been quite frankly conditioned my entire life to not assume those responsibilities and it has been you know motherly responsibilities in, in, in so much of a life so it's been really eye-opening for me and I won't lie like we've had arguments <laughs> we've had know? some really tough difficult conversations and it's it's been difficult to have those, especially when we both know that we're trying so hard to become a more mm -hmm. authentic person, like individually and as a family and mm -hmm. as a couple, like best friends. We like want to be there in so many ways for each other. Yeah. And um, obviously you don't always see eye to eye on things. And so like reading this book overall to get to the point, reading this book overall has been a conversation starter and an action promoter for both of us mm -hmm. so I would say now we're creating a list and <laughs> what's the number of the list <laughs> and it's it's greatly needs to increase yeah. but we have well over 150 items that are listed as like to do's and it's it's not the purpose of doing the list was not to like say I'm doing this and you're doing that but it was also to like kind of do that recognizing what invisible tasks are being mm -hmm. done from gifting from reservations for parties from planning out meals to cooking meals to scheduling appointments you Cleaning, get the idea all the child care stuff yeah like we could go on forever about that there's a very similar other program called fair play where they have cards that i think you can just purchase online that essentially will provide you with like this examples list. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to get like the conversation going in for both people in the partnership to realize like there are so many things to think about and it kind of takes away the step that we've done we just thought we would just list it ourselves and kind of hone it to our situation because we are in a unique scenario in the fact that we live away from family we you know live in an interesting community where we're like integrated here in japan and but in europe also, we were but, but also, also not, not. Integrated. Yeah. yeah 
Like it's just a very unique setting and some of the things that we do are definitely different than other families. So we've kind of tailored that. Plus even YouTube's like its whole other <laughs> gig with it. Anyways, yeah. so, you know, I'm really proud of us honestly for doing some of that work and reading it and having the desire to find more of the equality and you know, we're working on it. A lot of stepping up for Tanner in that regard, which it does come with a lot of like aches and pains and grow, you know, growing pains. Yeah, and I'll be the first one to admit, like as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I feel like I'm a pretty hands-on and very active part of like our girls' lives and even our yeah. lives. But that doesn't discredit the fact that there's still a lot of room to grow to get to the fair play or to the equal, equal equality or the equal lifestyle um, that we both want like me as a father and as a husband like I want to be there more for her so that she can feel like she can take the extra time for self-care or for mm -hmm. self-pleasure whatever that means um, even though at times I might feel like I can't even have that so thinking of adding extra can be a lot anyway we don't have to go it. in a lot but we're working on it it's we're in the growing pain stage I think yeah and I'm, I'm very curious to hear in the comments below like some of your guys's stories if you have any advice for us if you've personally you know are feeling this way if you want to have a change in your relationship if you feel like you've already went through this because I do feel like living in Europe like I noticed or at least I made the assumption that a lot of other German families seem to like have a much better balance and I do have to say I think some of the reason why we oh, <laughs> another hand I feel like some of the reason why you know maybe we have felt like things haven't been that fair is because of the environment we were raised in like we and the religion we were raised in the culture we were raised in like it's not just you know being Americans growing up in Utah there is a lot more to it that at some point maybe we'll go more into but I feel like you know we've kind of been a product of, an, of our environment growing up and living in Europe was really refreshing to see you know outside of that more religious bubble outside of that culture and community like wow people are living their lives in such a different way and it seems like they're figuring out a better balance but with the same goal in mind right mm -hmm. just a different yeah. approach not yeah. to say moms and dads that we don't love you and we don't love anything that we had about our lifestyle and growing up like to each person their environment like you said a product of their environment for good or for bad and we just see a lot of growth in our I guess in our desire for what we want out of life and then like what we want out of our marriage being changed living abroad like you well said before mm -hmm. and I just think you can find so many videos I mean so many of our fellow YouTube friends in Germany are talking about you know the differences between American culture and German culture and like these equality differences and lifestyle differences and cultural differences it all plays a part in like the day-to-day -day things that partners do in a marriage and a relationship in their individual you know self journey of life yeah We'll so, leave it at that that was a lot I that know was a that lot. was a lot <laughs> but we would love to hear from people who have either gone through this going through it or want to go through it just like kind of your thoughts about the perspective because we just shared ours so and we would highly recommend the book I would say and the fair play documentary yeah both good. good both really good okay what's next babe? making fun memories with our girls what are yeah so uh, if you guys have noticed recently we went to <coughs> South Korea and we really had an amazing time it was definitely more difficult than other trips I just think being in a city sometimes has that high end anxiety with kids running around but Beside that point, we had some really fun memories, honestly, in the hotel rooms <laughs> was like some of our highlights are in the airplane, but the, the ones that we're talking about more specifically is like we were in Busan and it was raining and Willa just was totally on board of doing this recital, a play, and she just went all carefree and we were, she was on the other bed, we were her audience and her and Noah were just being so adorable and cute, dancing. dancing, singing and saying, what did she say? The show's gonna start in 24 minutes. <laughs> I don't know why 24 <laughs> sticks out to her so much, but it's she probably one of the most number. probably one of the most re, uh, repeated numbers that she says. But some awesome memories of just seeing both her and Noah grow up so much. Like Willa's reading books now, very simple words and phrases, but she's generally curious. She's starting to write like Japanese characters, illegible, but she's starting to <laughs> write Japanese horrible. characters. And Noah is starting to talk a little bit. 
yesterday she did what for the first time last she night? sat on the potty on the toilet and she peed and we were like <laughs> <laughs> she's just like she has this desire to be like her big sister she's literally willa's shadow and willa is so like patient with her uh, most of the time uh, <laughs> most of the time really for yeah. how much like for willa how much goes to sit down is, yeah. noah comes to sit down willa does this and no one wants to do that and just like everything like this morning i actually didn't even show you but like willa got dressed and Noah wouldn't put on her diaper. She had to wear Willa's panties. <laughs> so I literally put them on. We're sitting down reading a book that Willa's like her next book. Because she's read like seven of these books. We were learning new words like meat and in and it. And no peas on my lap. Straight peas on my lap. And Willa's like, my panties are dirty. <laughs> like we'll wash them. So it's just like that's an insight to some of like life. With like two adorable freaking adorable girlies who just like our sisters and they're gonna fight and, and wear they each do. other's clothes yeah and they do <laughs> <laughs> but like noah just has like such a love for willa it's like the cutest thing in the morning to like see them she does beams right up but we've been making a lot of fun memories and that's what i think we're also trying to do as we reevaluate like what is a life balance travel life work balance mm -hmm. look and yeah. what does that look like for the kids as they grow up and become more involved with activities? And like, what, what does that look for us? So it's, it's an ever-changing thing that we're going through. I, I wanted to talk about the little forts that we've been building because that's yeah, also cute. Yeah. Like lately, Willa, every day when she gets home or when Tanner gets home too, like wants to build the castle. And it's basically like our tripod with like blankets and we just like do imaginative play. And it's just so fun. I feel like we're to that stage now where you know, it's not just like taking care of their basic needs as babies, kind of. It's so much like, it's just like fun playing memories. And like, I have to remind myself, Willa's and Noah's childhood, like, this is it right now. Like, it's memories are gonna memories, be, yeah. yeah, are gonna be remembered now from Willa here. So it's really fun. And not to say we didn't have a blast on our South Korea trip, but it was fun to like fill in those holes with like, some of those smaller things, smaller things, right? I feel like in the end of life, like those are like the big important things. It's been really fun. Uh, we're gonna hop back to maybe this work-life balance and whatever is just to give kind of like maybe our two cents on how our YouTube like experience has been. That's one thing with the emotional labor, Marissa has taken on 95% of it. Um, it was a little bit more divided at first. I was editing mm -hmm. videos at first, but I think I became, honestly, I just became frustrated with how long it took and the extra time it took and by default she took over and she does an amazing job now. We haven't gone over that topic yet to see where it goes, but <laughs> that's my kind of, I guess, my two cents at this point. I'm rambling, what are your But thoughts? I mean, from the beginning, I don't know if we've ever shared this story. Like, I had a really strong desire to start YouTube, like the idea stemmed from me and I remember yeah. actually we met up with passport too we actually never like did a video about it but like we met up we had breakfast or something with them and I remember him thinking like Tanner's the one like who kind of kickstarted the idea he's like doing the behind the scene editing and I'm sure he maybe assumed that because he does That's what he, yeah but I was like hold up why does Tanner like why are you assuming Tanner because you know I've just always from the beginning like when we were backpacking in Asia well before kids like I wanted to record our journey there I specifically remember when we were in India mm -hmm. I don't remember which city we were but we were in a hotel and I remember you asking me like hey let's start a video of our travels here I might have that video saved and if so I should put a little <laughs> clip into it or we can just tell you and you guys can use your you know, imagination. visual imagination we but talked we did we some talked updates. a little bit and I I just was not gonna have it I was definitely the sour apple of the day and I I just didn't want to do it I thought it was I didn't know what value it even bring because I was just not in the headspace to even do it I was as you guys can probably see, I was maybe a little nervous <laughs> about what could become of mm -hmm. it, but I think also I didn't want to add more work. I think while we were traveling, like I think I wanted to be more fully present during the travels, and I was afraid that by doing videos, it would detract from our experience. And mm -hmm. honestly, looking back now, I know without a doubt that it would have enhanced our experience because we would have had so many more visuals to like look back to and yeah. to 
have started our YouTube channel. That would have been 2018. Guys, we would have. I, I feel like that <laughs> channel would have soared. That was the time to get in, huh? But at the it's, same time, it's hindsight. It's, it's hindsight. You never right? know. We won't ever know, and we can always talk about the what could have, but at this right. position, like, yeah. Fast forward to we had Willa, we're in our house, you know, and Leighton renovating, and I remember, like, watching quite a bit of Karen and Nate videos, and I was like, man, that lifestyle just, like, has always really been attractive to me. And we had traveled, you know, we Tanner fell in love with backpacking, and we had done cross-country of the States. Anyways essentially we knew we wanted to get back international and we yeah. were waiting for a job for germany like when we started our channel but i just felt like so strongly like we should try this again and you were more on board like I was it took a little board. convincing yeah. and then i think once we finally made it to europe and obviously the response from a lot of the german community was huge so right good. like that was really huge but it also gave us more talking points mm -hmm. i think right because people were genuinely interested on what our take was and so from there yeah. I think you just get more of the mentality of like oh like there's the interest oh and that makes me think of this or whatever this is a cool story so, and like there is stuff we want to share you know but then also for us like we've said this time and again like our purpose with YouTube mm -hmm. is to make family memories right that's have truly those. why we started because we're like we're going those. to Germany yeah like, so looking back now it. like having this video journal of so many of our experiences and our thoughts and feelings has been nice because uh, we've both fell out of writing in journals, you know, like we used, <laughs> used to be to. very good, like almost daily mm -hmm. journal writing for both of us for yeah. a good several years. And then I think we just fell out of it. We love having these memories documented and we love doing this with our family. And I really feel like we found a good balance because that's where we were talking about YouTube was balance, right? Like when we film, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we have such a good flow. Like we're on travels, but I don't feel like it detracts from our travels. Again, maybe it even enhances it. There are still some moments that I think <coughs> it wouldn't be fair to say that it's easy and flawless. There are some moments where it's like, we just have to stop filming or we just have to miss filming a certain thing because I don't know, like kids or moods or maybe yeah you know. mostly if like our kids like just need us i think that's a good thing though is like we're not gonna be filming them when they need us like we're gonna be there with them and the camera's not there yeah like we don't feel like it's right to film tantrums or not to film all. moments when they're me you know at their lowest obviously we put that vulnerability for ourselves out because that's for us to decide mm -hmm. um but at that point like we yeah, we don't need to spotlight when they're at their lowest uh, or at a, a really hard time of need, you know? Yeah, but finding the balance between the other stuff, like the logistics of having a YouTube channel, the comments on videos, that one's a big... It, it takes a lot of time, probably more than people understand. Even for us, when maybe some of our lower commenting videos were like trying to like respond back, but it's a lot with two kids with you know all of the other things we've got going on like it genuinely is hard yeah. but we want to because we care about our audience we care about you guys we consider you guys friends part of our like extended family joining us on these adventures yeah. in a part you know willis was like hey you know like will even herself is like can i talk to them i don't think she knows who <laughs> them is but like i think she does in general because <laughs> In anyway. a sense, yeah, the other things of the editing creating the thumbnails doing the descriptions working with Ad collaborations. For ad collaborations. I, I honestly think we've come a long ways I from agree. where we are. I agree. But it still doesn't go without saying that we're trying to establish a, uh, you know, maybe better balance between, you know, how things are done or, or when they're done. But. I think honestly, like, once Snow is old enough to be in childcare, like, we're going to, at least that's my hope, is like really get like that smooth routine. Because we had it before we had Noah again. When Willa was at school, it was like, I could bust out videos. She gets home, I am 100% focused on her. You get home, it's like family's focused. You know, all of, I'm working during my work hours and I have my attention, but those early childhood years are so precious and so amazing and you know, you wanna savor them, but it's also so difficult to work and balance that. So it's definitely like our season of life right now. And again, I'm trying to savor it, but I also wanna keep working and keep doing videos. So just in, in that time of life that every young parent understands yeah. especially if they're trying to work out of the home or in the home yeah definitely well said well said it would be a shame if we didn't talk about the dreaded heat 
um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of people in the U.S. right now, and I do know that in Europe they've had some hotter days uh, the last little bit in the last few weeks. It's definitely not a surprise that there are heat waves and stuff going all over the world constantly during the summer months, depending on the hemisphere. But like we have really, I think, had our eyes opened <laughs> the last few weeks. Um, at just what the summer is going to really fully look like mm -hmm. um, and what it's looked like so far. Last night, we went upstairs. Um, it was it was probably, what, 85 degrees outside, maybe a little warmer. During the day, full sun, so like a very hot and humid day. Mm -hmm. And I just remember leaving like our air-conditioned living room area and then walking <laughs> up the stairs, and every single step, it felt like just like thicker <laughs> and heavier and yeah. hotter. And then we opened up our bathroom door, which is usually closed because it's hot and it's just like a nasty sauna fill it's not even like a, <laughs> a, a, a good sauna fill right it's it's i am surprised at how much humidity yeah humidity is in the air it is it's intense one thing to mention is that they use umbrellas here for sun mm -hmm. protection all the time even on a cloudy day i get it <laughs> yeah. there is uv that does filter through the clouds like it's not all just gone but we i'm so surprised when i see people working outside <laughs> wearing like an under armor long sleeve shirt long pants mask a hat and a, like a neck gaiter and the only skin you can possibly <laughs> see is their fingertips if they like have a phone that they're touching or like right around their nose or something the sunglasses yeah it's like legit the weirdest thing because i'm like how you're like you a heat, heat stress or heat stroke like <laughs> yeah anyway it's going to be interesting and uh hot experience this summer we're going to really appreciate having an ice maker in our fridge that is true. I have already loved that. You guys know that from Germany. I miss that a lot. So it has been well loved in our family. But we're happy to say that we have family coming in the heat of the hottest time. So I'm very grateful because I don't have to, you know, I get to, I get a distraction. I get to travel with my sister and her husband and we're just going to have so many fun memories. So that's our next video is they're going to be here and we're just going to take you guys with us on our adventures, show you guys some of their first impressions. We have some really fun stuff planned, including a hike to... A certain mountain. <laughs> that we are so excited about. You guys, what a ride it's been here with YouTube. I love like these sit down chatting videos. I, I'm sure some of you guys watching this, like you probably felt like we haven't done a lot of these. I feel like we have because we have Patreon. And yeah, yeah that, was my, Patreon, that was my cue yeah. to go ahead and talk about this is Patreon has kind of shifted from doing like I guess it started out as doing more of like the trip cost breakdowns mm -hmm. and then occasional Q&A's um, and and although I have said that I do want to get back to those you know videos of like doing a cost breakdown of like our trips and stuff they've definitely shifted more of being like behind the scenes and more insight into our personal lives and so this is the type of video mm -hmm. that we do the style of videoing that we just sit, sit down or we're walking mm -hmm. and we just hit record and like we just let come whatever comes because for us it also makes it easier because mm -hmm. then we can just basically have no editing yeah. but also at the same time it just I think it lowers maybe that pressure that a lot of maybe content creation has of having like things be perfect um, without like edits and stuff like that so if you're interested and you want to contribute to our like YouTube experience mm -hmm. or our YouTube content here um, because it does take a lot of time you can do that by becoming a monthly patreon um, it, we Four dollars a month. Yeah, we so honestly. So we tried to make it super affordable. We don't expect people to pay a ton, but it does mean a lot, and the support does. And it makes a difference, yeah, and it make does make it. It makes it more possible for us to be able to go and and share a lot of our experiences and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. camera equipment alone can cost a lot. <laughs> but anyway, beside which the we've point. Been having problems. Yeah, which we've been having <laughs> Anyways. problems. Anyways, but. Overall, we just want to thank all those Patreon mm -hmm. members who are there already currently and for those that are going to be joining over the next little bit, thank you so much. We really mean that um, because for us, although the purpose is for us to make memories, um, we do really appreciate any contributions that you guys make. So go ahead and find that link up to our Patreon down below. You guys can catch up on some videos that we've been sharing over the last year and a half, I believe, is what how long it's been open. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you for wow. sure, but I do know it was it's, it's over a year Maybe at this a year, point. Yeah. Um, so go ahead, check out some fun new content that's over there that we'll be releasing as time comes on. But overall, we just want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. It has been a ride. What does this put us as? Almost five years, or just over four years, right? With YouTube. 
since we've no, been establishing No, not quite it. that long. It'll be four Maybe? years. Maybe? Yeah, this... We started, like, the fall time before we moved to Germany. We yeah. moved in Germany 2021, so we yeah. started fall of 2020. So we're almost at four, almost years, at of, four years of the actual thing. I think our video description, like, our YouTube channel description says started in 2016. Way later, but that's earlier. That yeah, was that's because, not accurate. That was because you had posted a video one time about kefir... <laughs> and about some of their I mean, recipes. I it's still up there. You guys don't go and look at our old, old videos. <laughs> yes. That's the fun part, I think, is seeing some of the girls. See how far we've grown. Oh, oh my gosh. That was little, first school. Our little baby's just looking at us in the stroller. She's over <laughs> in the she's, shade. Now she's about guys. to sleep. You guys, this has just been fun yeah. to chat with you guys. I feel like it's kind of like, what's the word? Cathar? I don't even know what you're trying to say. I don't even know what cathartic means. Cathartic? No. <laughs> cathartic? Is no, that that's it? not it either. No. Lethargic. Lethargic. <laughs> <laughs> Not lethargic. And and. Yeah, I don't know. Even try and do it. Anyways, I don't know what they are doing it's meant a lot. I mean, we're just being real. We're just being honest. I feel like we have been in like a really growing and stretching period, and some would think it's probably just because we're moved to Japan. It might appear like that, but I just like Tanner said, there's a lot of internal stuff that we're deconstructing and trying to like really build upon really figure out our belief system who we are who, who we want to be how we want to raise our kids you know like big questions and it's just yeah. happened at like a busy time in our lives and and they kind of compound on each other right mm -hmm. it's like because you are assessing an internal like dilemma <laughs> you like have to address all these other things that you've been practicing and doing so it's like not just one piece of the pie at a time we're kind of getting it all at the same time and like not only that but it's like probably been in part because we're doing this like us living abroad has totally changed our perspectives on so many things so then it's like naturally segued into this journey too yeah. you know like if we didn't live abroad who knows where we'd be and we are so happy that we've moved abroad and just like been stretched been like pushed out of our comfort zone out of our you know we're using our critical thinking now we're using our oh we're just yeah, forced we're just, we're just forced to do a lot of things that mm -hmm. help us help us look at life differently overall mm -hmm. but wouldn't do it with anyone else same so anyways we really are like against all of that i feel like we're really enjoying japan the heat's a new experience but like positive feelings about coming here and it's exciting to think about where we're gonna be have a great day. Mm -hmm.